waiting for. It's a 215 Dell XDS 15. It's the 9550. And is it the MacBook Pro killer? Well, let's take a look. Now, these computers are designed for professionals. It has a 100% Adobe RGB screen. It's an Infinity Edge screen. It's almost got no bezel. And that's not 100% sRGB, that's 100% Adobe RGB, which is what professionals mostly use. And the Mac doesn't have a 100% Adobe RGB screen. In fact, I don't think it has a 100% um, sRGB screen. So this has a much better screen. It's actually brighter than the MacBook Pro screen. It looks much better the way it's framed in the Infinity Edge frame. And let's just compare some sizes here. Now this thing here, this beast, that's actually a 15 inch laptop. And they still sell these. This one's a bit old, but they still sell ones with this footprint, this size. And in actual fact, the footprint of this isn't much bigger than the MacBook Pro 15 inch. Except the MacBook Pro is a lot lighter and it's thinner. But that's a basic footprint on a 15 inch and it's determined by the bezels. This is what determines the size, the footprint of the actual unit itself. So as you see with the Dell, it's got almost borderless screen so they're able to make the laptop a lot smaller now you have about one centimeter here you probably can't see that but there's one centimeter gap there you got about an inch and a half here there's a bit of a difference i think you'll all agree there and this isn't a true 15 inch it's actually 14.5 rounded up so that makes it even more impressive really. This laptop here is basically the same footprint as a MacBook Air. So it's a 13 inch. This is smaller than my 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is the MacBook Air size. And then you have the Surface. Okay, this is the Surface Pro 3. And of course it's much smaller because this is basically the smallest and lightest you can get. This is smaller and lighter than the actual MacBook. So not the MacBook Pro, the MacBook. So that's some basic size comparisons and as I said the thing that's best about this is obviously the screen. And this beautiful Affinity Edge. So basically you're getting 15 inch powerhouse laptop in a 14 inch frame. Weighs the same as the MacBook Pro, but it's a smaller footprint. And it's much more powerful as you'll see. It's got a better graphics card, it's got the latest processors, it's got the Skylake processors. And it actually matches Apple with design too. So let's have a look at this gorgeous screen. And there you have it. Took a while to wake up, but she got there. It's a beautiful screen. Look how small the bezel is. There is one trade-off, the webcam is down there, 
it's a small price to pay. There is a little bit of a chin there, but it looks much better. When you see the MacBook Pro, and I'll show a photo of one, because I only have the 13 inch MacBook Pro. But when you see a MacBook Pro 15 inch, it looks dated. Now they, they are beautiful pieces of kit, but the one thing that makes them look dated is definitely they'll have raised the bar with this Affinity Edge screen. It just looks so beautiful. This carbon fibre finish is very nice as well. So you've got something here that matches the MacBook Pro in build quality and aesthetics and design. So that's it's well done to Dell. I've got to give them props for that. So bravo Dell. Let's talk about the screen. And this is where this laptop kills other laptops. This is the brightest screen I've ever used, ever. I cannot use it 100%. I've turned down the lights a little bit so you can get a sense of how bright it is. I use it, no kidding, at 75% because my 100% is too bright and at night when I'm in my lounge room, I only use it at 50 or 25 and that's perfectly fine. It is really that bright. In comparison, here's a Surface Book. I mean, Surface Book, I wish. Um, this is the Surface Pro 3, and that's full brightness. You can probably see the Dell is brighter, although the camera might not show that. It is definitely brighter. And this is one of the best screens on the market, so that's pretty good. As I said, it's 100% Adobe RGB. So any professionals, video editors, Photoshop, who need the proper colour, this is the screen to go for. It absolutely kills anything and hands down beats the MacBook Pro. As you know, it is a touch screen. So you can touch it. The 1080p version is not touch screen. As I said, if you want battery life, go to 1080p. Okay, the body is built out of a block of aluminium and that's aluminum for the people in the Americas um, but it isn't unibody so it isn't just one piece even though it might be one block that they machine all the pieces out of you can see here these things are joined but it's supposed to be milled out of one solid piece of aluminium so it's a nice aluminium too it's a nice color it's the proper aluminium color there's no coloration to it it's not darker it's not lighter that's the proper aluminium color and looks just looks really good whichever way you look at it now one thing here you have this what do you call it? Armrest or palm rest? And then you have a trackpad. Now, on the MacBook Pro, they're glass. The MacBook Pro has the best trackpad. Just, it is. The new Force Touch trackpad is the best. This is a good trackpad, but it's not as good as the Mac one. And I would prefer if this was aluminium here too. Now, this is carbon fiber and it has some sort of paint or resin on the top and as I'm using this touchpad I'm actually getting sort of marbles like as the friction of my hand goes across it seems to be creating little micro marbles and they end up on a trackpad now that's the resin or paint I guess marbling you wouldn't be able to see it you can't see the marbling, but you can feel it. So you just feel little micro marbling. Now, that will wear within time, I'm sure about it. And it is nice, it's soft to touch. It's got a nice texture on it. But I do prefer the hard metal of the Unibody MacBook Pro. That's one bit. 
but aesthetically it looks good because it's all black, looks stealth with the, the uh, borderless display here. So really it's in the eye of the beholder. I would say definitely in the aesthetic uh, stakes it is a match for the MacBook Pro um, 15 inch and definitely looks more contemporary with this with this borderless I mean the Mac does look dated with the with the large bezels but every other part of the MacBook looks good so it's as good as if not better it's probably your opinion it's up to you so Dell claim it's the smallest 15 inch laptop on the market smallest and lightest it's 11 millimeters on the, the thinnest part and 17 millimeters on the thickest part. Starts at 1.78 kilos. It's cut obviously from one block of aluminium. It's got Gorilla Glass on the screen. It uses Intel's sixth generation um, Skylight processors. This is this particular one's an i7. And this one has 256 gigabytes of SSD, PCIe SSD storage. So when you get the 4K screen, you get the bigger battery. Because around here, you can get a mechanical hard drive. If you get the 4K screen, the battery comes across here. If you get a 4K screen, they take out that hard drive. They fill this with battery as well. So basically the whole bottom is the battery. So you can get that upgraded to a terabyte the SSD. It has 16 gigabytes RAM, has two slots, and this has two 8 gigabyte uh, modules. It's two 133 megahertz, and a DDR4 memory. It's got the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M, and it's got two gigabytes of memory on that graphics card. We know about the 4K screen. There's also a 1080p non-touch screen. This obviously uses more battery, and I'll get to battery later. So if battery life is really important to you, get the 1080p screen. But as you'll see later, this is quite serviceable, the battery in this. It's, so it has Bluetooth 4.1 and it has Wi-Fi 802.11ac. It's good that it's got Bluetooth 4.1 instead of an older 4.0, so that's good. And this one has the 84 watt hour battery. The mechanical drive version will have the um, 3 cell 56 watt hour. So it has a HDMI, has two USB 3s with PowerShare, has a heads has a headset jack, SD card reader that reads all the latest cards, has a Kingston lock slot, has Thunderbolt 3.1 which will leave as USB-C, which you can also use for VGI, HDMI, Ethernet, USB, all this sort of stuff you can do. And it's got a 10 gigabits per second throughput. 720p widescreen camera. And this is the only laptop on the market with 100% Adobe RGB, which is phenomenal. If you're a designer, video editor, you use Photoshop, this is the screen for you. This is the machine and it's also great for gamers, so that's good too. First of all, I don't believe in synthetic benchmarks. I don't think they're a real true indicator of how machine performance. 3D mark, I've done your basic 3D mark. Okay, so let's talk about the keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard is a chiclet backlit full size keyboard. It has 1.3 millimeters of travel and it feels very nice. It's very sturdy. It feels solid keys feel much better. This is where the trackpad may be better on the, um, the MacBook Pro but definitely the keyboard is better on the XPS. It's not as good as say a, a ThinkPad but they're up there. I would say I'll give them a 9 out of 10. Let's get on to the trackpad. It feels very smooth. 
Now the MacBook Pro has a glass trackpad. This feels smoother, softer. Actually, the glass one feels better. The, the, there's just no way of going about it. The Mac just has a better trackpad. The glass, your fingers glide across it better. And it also has a better click because they've got the force touch. This one obviously clicks at the bottom. And doesn't click there. Clicks in the middle. But it's a bit clunky. That's all you would say. It's still a nice, it still feels nice to click. But compared to the MacBook Pro, no contest. So there's the underside of it. As I said, it looks much better than the MacBook Pro on the bottom. Got rubber here. These are intake vents, they're not outtake. It does get warm. It does. When you're gaming, it gets warm. I don't notice any heat. Just generally surfing the web and stuff. And actually, I was thought there was actually something wrong with the unit because I actually didn't hear a fan until I cranked up again. So just surf the net, the fans will probably never kick in. You just feel a little bit of warmth here sometimes. But the speakers up here, these are really loud. Really loud. Like I can only have them on 20% if that. And they're really loud. This is the, um, and they're really loud. This is the service tag. That's where you have the name, your serial number. I think you got your windows in there, code maybe too, I'm not sure where that is. But it's a service tag. It's a little, neat little thing, isn't it? Let's just run it at 4K, see what happens. So I've been playing now about 20 minutes. Um, what are we going to do? I'm going to build the city out. And the fan is very quiet. It's just humming along there. It's not really, it's, not, it's definitely not a hairdryer. Now, is it hot? It's getting warm. It is getting warm. But the fan is, it's just starting to kick in now after about 20 minutes playing 4K on C5. And as I said, I'll be doing a, um, a gaming review on this laptop. So stay tuned for that. So let's quickly check out the speakers and the sound. doesn't even seem distorted either, so you, you've seen how loud I have to speak. I have to speak really loud to speak over it. It's that loud. Let's talk about battery life. And for such a bright, high resolution screen, the battery life's good. I'm getting about averaging. The first time I had six hours, first charge, on my fourth charge now, and I would say I'm averaging anywhere from five to seven hours. And one of them I nearly got eight hours, so, and that's 50% brightness. So the battery's really good. And if you get the 1080p version, you can almost double that. So the battery, I'll give it a thumbs up. 